Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions, where I break down the hottest and latest in 3D printing news each week so you can keep up with all the exciting developments in the 3D printing space. This week we're going to cover Coob's 3D printed shoes, some new EMI blocking 3D printing filament, and Amazon's top 3D printers of the month. I know your time is valuable, so let's dive right in. Okay, first up, we've got a new player throwing their hat in the ring to scale 3D printed shoes. Their name is Kubes. So Kubes is making these fully 3D printed shoes made from flexible filament printed as a single piece. Yes, that includes the sole and the upper part of the shoe, no assembly, gluing, or stitching. It's all printed as one piece. The value they bring with the 3D printed shoes is the speed and simplicity of producing the shoes. Normally for big retailers to make a new shoe from concept to market to mass production can take 18 to 24 months with the sampling, the mold making, the production ramp up, etc. Traditional shoe manufacturing can have between 70 and 200 components per shoe and 300 to 700 production steps. At least that's the claims according to Kubes. That seems a little bit high if you ask me. But anyways, for Kubes and their strategy, they're not going to sell you shoes directly. However, they want to work with smaller niche footwear providers and just be the manufacturer in the background. The advantages of this is they can help create customized designs that are quick to market and to keep up with trends. I think this could be a really big deal if say online influencers want to make a custom 3D printed shoe specific to their brand that they could sell in a limited production quantity to their audience. So this could be a win-win to both the influencer and the producer, Kubes in this case, because it would be a small scale limited production run People wanting to support their influencers would probably pay a premium to this and the influencers could customize the design as much as they want and get it released and sent to market pretty quickly. So I think that would be an area to look at for this small scale limited production from Kubes. So checking out Kubes website, I was pretty skeptical at first with the absolute lack of content and overuse of AI generated images. Then I was digging in a little further on LinkedIn and we can see that Kubes is the real deal. They're actually participating in shoe material expos. They've got a couple limited manufacturing runs with others, and they've just closed a seed round, bringing their total investment up to $7.2 million. Now they will finally move out of the garage status and into an actual headquarters. Their current setup appears to be pretty basic with just a number of dual head Sovol 3D printers cranking off shoes, but hey, every business has got to start somewhere. They're now planning to buy up to 800 3D printers to allow for an annual capacity of 200,000 shoes by the end of 2026. And guess what? They're hiring. So if you believe in this company, their mission, and you live near Ventura, California, be sure to check them out on LinkedIn. Next, I ran across a new type of 3D printing filament that I hadn't seen before. This is an EMI PETG made by 3DX Tech. That's a lot of letters. Let's break it down. So what's unique about this is it can block electromagnetic interferences, or EMI, coming from electronics. So why this is a big deal is all electronics emit some type of EMI radiation. And if you have electronics that emit too much of this, it can interrupt signals from other things like your Wi-Fi router, your cell phone, or other wireless signals around your house. You likely haven't dealt with these issues because all consumer products are tested to ensure that they have acceptable levels of EMI. But if you develop electronic products, EMI testing is a very important stage that you have to pass in order to sell your products to consumers. So normally these EMI waves travel right through plastics. So I thought it was interesting that somebody is selling an EMI PETG that can block these EMI waves, which can make it pretty useful for prototyping at a business, or if you have some homemade electronics that are interrupting some of your devices, this material would be great to use in those applications. So you could use this to 3D print a case for a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino at home. So check out the link in the description down below if you wanna learn more about this material. And finally, it's the end of the month again, so let's check out the Amazon's top 3D printers of the month. So diving into the data here, this is the same compilation of the list that I did in the past. It's just the straight 20 top 3D printers off Amazon. Then I went and cleaned up the data since there's some duplicates there. Now we have the top 15 list here. We'll look through a few of these. We've got the first rank again for many months in a row coming in as the Flash Forge 5M series, 2,700 units at $259 a piece. We've got Elegoo, Neptune 3 after that, Creality Ender 3, B3 SE. I'm not sure why Amazon lists Elegoo higher, but they do, and that's just how I have it listed here. 
Creality Ender 3, the very old school original Ender 3 there for $169. Another Flash Forge 85M, Any Cubic Cobra S1, Elegoo Saturn 4 resin printer, uh, Bamboo Labs A1 Mini, the only Bamboo Labs that is sold on Amazon. This AOC 3D printer for kids, again, this one's making the top 20 list on Amazon. Creality K1C, Any Cubic Photon Mono 7, and the Mono 4, Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra 9K, Creality K1 SE, and the Flash Forge 85M Pro. So next I went and grouped all those sales together by brand and listed the total quantity and the total dollar value here in this table. First up here again is the Flash Forge with 3,900 total printers sold and just over a million dollars. Then in a distant second place is Elegoo with 1,200 printers sold, $433,000 followed by Creality with just 1,100 printers and 272,000. Anycubic in fourth place with 800 printers, $229,000. Bamboo Labs in fifth place with 400 printers and 159,000. And then AOSeed in sixth place with 500 printers and $127,000. So now since we've been doing this for a couple months, even though I missed the month of May, we can see a little bit of a trend line here. We're seeing now a lot of the bigger names here with Flash Forge and Creality are actually down since April with Creality sales being cut significantly. I went back and looked into why that was. And the main reason was the Creality K1C, um, one of their higher end flagship models, had huge sales in April of like 900 units. And this month had less than 200 units of sales. So that really dropped their revenue since that one is a very expensive printer. Elegoo seems to be making steady progress. Anycubic down. Bamboo Labs very steady, maybe slightly up. And then AOC, it's their second month on here that I've captured and they're growing a little bit. Um, so that's looking well. So that's what I have for the Amazon 3D printing sales trends. Let me know if this was useful to you or if you'd like to see some other ways that we can cut apart and analyze this data. That's it for the main news topic. So let's check out the printables prints of the week. All right, and for the printables print of the week, we're going with a the theme of Nintendo Switch Pro Controllers. So the first one up is the Switch Pro Controller Holder by Schmo. And this is about as basic and as simple as it gets, but it's so effective and it fits like a glove. So instead of the controller sitting on my table, taking up a bunch of space, I printed out one of these bad boys, and now I can uh, set it up. It looks nicer and it takes up half the space. So I really am a big fan of this very basic Nintendo Switch Pro Controller by Schmo. On the other end of the spectrum is this Zelda Majora's Mask inspired Switch Pro Controller holder. It was made by Gobby Gobstoppers. So this one has a nice uh, little stone here designed and the shield from Majora's Mask put on the front of it. So I obviously like this one because it's a Zelda theme and it does work pretty well. It doesn't fit like a glove like the other one, but it works good enough. A um, little bit disappointed though with the model itself. The picture on printables and the shield that was actually printed out are not the same. And the shield had no way to attach to the stone here, so I ended up just gluing it on. There was also a sword and a sword holder. Again, no way to attach it to the model, so a little disappointed in that. And based on the photo from the, the printables model, I'm not sure that the guy had even printed this out himself. But I do have to say, all in all, I love a Zelda-themed uh, Pro Controller holder. This is awesome. And that's it for the printables print of the week with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller themed holders. From 3D printed shoes to EMI blocking filaments and Amazon 3D printer sales trends, did you find anything useful in the news this week? Let me know in the comments down below if there's more specific topics you'd like me to dive into. If you want more content and would like to support the channel, go check me out on Patreon, linked in the description down below. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.